And joining us now is Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. I thank you for your time. Uh, let's, uh, if we could just start our conversation about this reporting. You've actually called for a short-term cessation of hostilities to accomplish three goals. One of them is the successful delivery of needed humanitarian aid to civilians under strict and necessary oversight. What is your reaction to these discussions? I think it's good news. I think it's good news in terms of getting aid uh, to Gaza. I think the humanitarian crisis there, 10,000 dead, is an enormous, enormous challenge. I think there's got to be time as well um, to see if we can get a breakthrough on hostages. And the Qataris are the people who can uh, talk with Hamas. I think we got to view Hamas. This is a terrorist organization committed to the destruction of Israel. Um, but this humanitarian pause, I think, is in Israel's long-term interests as well to make sure that uh, we can show Israel's ability to defend itself within the rules of war. I also think it's very important, and I put out a letter with a number of colleagues last night as well, urging the Israeli government and our administration to press the Israeli government to rein in some of this settler violence that is going on in the West Bank. I mean, the worst thing in the world for Israel would be if um, we have further outbreaks of violence on the West Bank where suddenly Israel would have a second front. And candidly, there needs to be respect for innocent Palestinian lives. Uh, indeed. So, Senator, what would a strict oversight of aid going into Gaza look like? Well, I think you've seen this been negotiated already in terms of the truck delivery, and, and it's really complicated. You'd have to get, if it comes from the south, you'd have to get a, a approval from the Egyptians. Uh, you'd have the Americans weighing in. You'd have the Israelis. You'd have to, through the Qataris, deal with Hamas and the U.N. to make sure the delivery of the aid um, falls into the right hands. I thought it was curious that, the, and a good sign, frankly, that the Jordanians literally airdropped some of this aid to their hospital in Gaza uh, because, again, I support Israel's right to defend itself, but I think the idea of innocent civilians being killed was such, at, at, at times, abandoned and not following uh, the tenets of, uh, of co armed conflict um, doesn't help Israel in the long term and obviously breeds huge discontent in the region, in Europe, and candidly here in the United States as well. Senator, so you're convinced that Israel is not following the tenets of war? Listen, I think anyone from an outside standpoint, and you've clearly got Secretary Blinken making the same case, that there needs to be this humanitarian pause. And um, I think that is appropriate. And I do think, you know, I, I hope that some of the scenes we've seen of um, the level of bombing uh, will not be necessary because you've now got Israeli troops um, surrounding Gaza City. You know, and it will be a challenge taking out these tunnels and taking out the Hamas leadership. Um, but clearly, in terms of world opinion, Israel for uh, a number of weeks now has been losing uh, that, uh, that world opinion uh, consideration. And, and you see that by protest breaking out everywhere. And again, it's in Israel's best interest not to have the other Arab states that have uh, created Abraham Accord recognitions to drop away from those accords. It's in Israel's best interest to make sure that you don't have this wanton settler violence against Palestinians in the West Bank. And I just hope that the Israeli government recognizes that. And, uh, Senator, I just want to uh, kind of turn the page on, on this, and I want to turn to last night's elections here in our country. It was a major win for Democrats across the country, particularly in your home state. Democrats mm -hmm. holding on to the state Senate, flipping the House. What were your takeaways from the results last night? Well, my takeaways were that, you know, that Virginians voted for freedom to make sure politicians don't inter interfere with women's health care choices. They didn't like some of the attitudes that were being proposed by the Republicans of rolling back voter rights or rolling back gun laws. And I do think Virginia, which is disproportionately influenced by the federal government, we've got a lot of federal employees, a lot of defense established, uh, dis, dis, defense um, installations. The absolute chaos that's been coming out of the House of Representatives, the extreme nature of the MAGA Republicans, I just don't think that's what uh, Virginians in overwhelming numbers want to see brought to Richmond.
Do you think, Senator, that what we saw last night in your state could have some implications going forward? And I'm thinking next year, you know, even as President Biden's, uh, at least some of the approval ratings in your state sit at 38 percent or so. Yeah, listen, it, president's got tough numbers, not only in Virginia, but else, elsewhere. But I do think, and the point I tried to make to the White House is that the first election of the 2024 national election cycle is the Virginia legislative elections in 2023. It was across the whole state. There were a lot of the key issues debated. It was a, you know, a very popular Republican governor with an agenda that I don't think Virginia's accepted, and Democrats holding the line and actually not only holding the line, but taking back the House. It was a good night for Virginia Democrats. Senator Mark Warner, it's always a pleasure to see you. I thank you for always being with us. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, sir.